Contrary to popular belief, human evolution was not characterized by survival of the fittest and extinction. In fact, evolution all comes down to interaction and mixture. According to a new study, Neanderthals had genes from ancient interactions with cousins of Homo sapiens. Neanderthals inherited at least 6% of their genome from an extinct lineage of archaic Homo sapiens that most likely lived in the region of Northeast Africa or Arabia 250,000 years ago. 75,000 years ago, Homo sapiens migrated to Eurasia, where they met and interbred with Neanderthals. However, according to a new study published in the journal Current Biology, Neanderthals were already carrying human DNA from a much older encounter with Homo sapiens at the time. Over 250,000 years ago, an ancient lineage of Homo sapiens migrated to Europe or the Near East and interbred with Neanderthals. These humans died out over time, leaving a population with Neanderthal ancestry. Scientists discovered this relic of ancient interbreeding, in which genes from ancient Homo sapiens flowed into Neanderthals. Between 250,000 and 270,000 years ago, this group of archaic Homo sapiens left Africa. They were cousins to all living humans, and they were much more like us than Neanderthals. It is often claimed these were failed expansions, yet there is also the possibility that archaic Homo sapiens also lived and evolved somewhere in the Middle East. This conclusion was reached after comparing a Neanderthal genome to a diverse set of genomes, from modern indigenous populations in sub-Saharan Africa. Most Neanderthal genomic regions in sub-Saharan African populations are the result of a 250,000-year migration of Homo sapiens populations from Africa to Eurasia, followed by admixture with Neanderthals, resulting in 6% Homo sapiens ancestry in Neanderthals. These findings suggest that Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa multiple times, and that gene flow between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens was bidirectional. Because most Neanderthal Homo sapien interbreeding is thought to have occurred in Eurasia rather than Africa, Neanderthal ancestry is expected to be limited in sub-Saharan Africa. However, a recent study found that several sub-Saharan populations contain chunks of DNA that resemble Neanderthal DNA. But the researchers couldn't figure out how this Neanderthal DNA got into these populations, whether it came from Homo sapiens who migrated from Africa, interbred with Neanderthals in Eurasia, and then returned, or if it came from an earlier encounter between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. It was also unclear whether Neanderthal DNA is widespread among sub-Saharan populations, because the study relied on a small number of genomes, all of which share a relatively recent common ancestor in Central and Western Africa. So scientists used a genetically diverse set of genomes from 180 individuals, from 12 different populations in Cameroon, Botswana, Tanzania and Ethiopia to better understand how widespread these Neanderthal DNA regions are across sub-Saharan Africa, and to elucidate their origins. The researchers identified regions of Neanderthal-like DNA in each genome and looked for evidence of Neanderthal ancestry. They then compared Homo sapiens genomes to a Neanderthal genome from approximately 120,000 years ago. For this comparison, the researchers devised a novel statistical method that allowed them to determine the origins of the Neanderthal DNA in these modern sub-Saharan populations. And whether they were regions inherited by Neanderthals from Homo sapiens or regions inherited by Homo sapiens from Neanderthals, and then brought back to Africa. Surprisingly, they discovered Neanderthal DNA in all sub-Saharan populations, indicating that this phenomenon is widespread. In most cases, this Neanderthal DNA came from an ancient lineage of Homo sapiens, who passed their DNA on to Neanderthals around 250,000 years ago when they migrated from Africa to Eurasia. Then these ancient Homo sapiens passed their Neanderthal genes on to the lineage that became modern humans who would then interbreed with again with Neanderthals some 75,000 years ago. Nevertheless, humans had become such different organisms in the nearly 500,000 years between the ancestors of Neanderthals splitting, off from the ancestors of Homo sapiens, and these other Homo sapiens interbreeding with Neanderthal populations that, while we could still interbreed quite easily, the hybrids didn't work so well. This indicates that we were very far along the path to becoming distinct species. These archaic Homo sapiens, a group of hominins from the Middle Stone Age, exhibit morphological and behavioral characteristics that place them in an intermediate position between modern Homo sapiens and Homo erectus. 
archaic Homo sapiens were typically classified as members of our species due to possessing brains of nearly modern size, yet were distinguished as archaic due to their primitive cranial morphology. The primary morphological features exhibited by archaic Homo sapiens include an average cranial capacity of 1,200 cubic centimeters. Additionally, these ancient humans display a level of encephalization that positions them between modern Homo sapiens and Homo erectus. Furthermore archaic Homo sapiens exhibit a degree of cranial robustness that falls between that of Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Lastly, in comparison to Homo erectus, archaic Homo sapiens possess a more rounded and less angled occipital region. The postcranial remains of Homo erectus, referring to the skeletal elements excluding the skull, are not commonly documented in scientific literature. But research indicates that the postcranial dimensions of Homo erectus generally align with those of contemporary Homo sapiens, albeit displaying greater robustness. Hence, the main differentiating factors between the archaic Homo sapiens and Homo erectus seem to be the observed variations in cranial morphology. The hominin fossil record is subject to diverse interpretations due to the existence of different schools of thought on the subject. The grouping of archaic Homo sapiens fossils from Africa and Europe has generated considerable scholarly discourse within the field, yet there have been assertions advocating for the classification of Eurasian hominin fossils, specifically those originating from Europe, as a distinct group or clade. The taxonomic and behavioral aspects of archaic Homo sapiens are expected to be subject to intense debate in the foreseeable future. Fortunately, the ongoing accumulation of middle Pleistocene hominin fossils, and the availability of associated archaeological and paleoanthropological evidence, hold promise for the eventual resolution of such debates. Discovering this ancient lineage of Homo sapiens is really exciting for future research, because it gives us a different lens to look at human evolution. Because we don't have DNA sequences from Homo sapiens fossils from that long ago, identifying these genetic sequences will shed light on archaic Homo sapiens evolution in Africa. Nevertheless, a diverse assortment of hominin fossils from various regions during the Middle Pleistocene, which do not neatly align with either Homo erectus or modern Homo sapiens, have frequently been classified as archaic Homo sapiens. The African fossil specimens encompass Bodo and Carbway, whereas the Western Eurasian fossil specimens primarily comprise Petrolona and Apodyma, both from Greece. According to certain researchers, it is imperative to incorporate southeastern Europe and the Middle East within the zone of hominization, a concept that pertains to the process of early human development. In this scenario Africa is not excluded, rather, the scope of human origins is being expanded. Indeed, the concept of a great divide between African and Eurasian species is an outdated idea, as is ignoring the the Middle East region's relevance to human evolution. Because members of Homo sapiens were in the Middle East about 200,000 years ago, they could have made an excursion to southern Europe too. In fact, some Neanderthal genomes preserve a trace of an interbreeding event, with Homo sapiens that took place at least 200,000 years ago, a sign that our ancestors must have entered Neanderthal territory early, before vanishing again. Perhaps they didn't like the climate, or didn't like the hunting, or didn't like having Neanderthals around, and retreated or were killed off. Archaic Homo sapiens first appeared in Africa around 300,000 years ago. According to fossil evidence, most of our ancestors did not leave the Dark Continent until about 200,000 years ago. The oldest Homo sapiens discovered outside of Africa is a 210,000-year-old skull discovered in Greece, which alters our understanding of human migration. Anthropologists exploring a cave on southern Greece's rugged coast discovered two mysterious hominin skull fossils. They were fragmented and distorted by time, and the cave's jumbled stratigraphy made them difficult to date. The fossils sat on a shelf for decades, their identity unknown. Shockingly, a cutting-edge analysis of their shape, combined with new dates, suggests that one skull may have represented our own species, which lived in Greece more than 200,000 years ago. According to the findings, this is the oldest known Homo sapiens fossil found in Europe. If this is correct, Homo sapiens' first forays out of our African cradle occurred much earlier, and extended much further than most paleoanthropologists thought, into territory dominated by our extinct big-headed cousins, the Neanderthals. Then, Homo sapiens vanished from Europe until about 50,000 years ago, 
when a later wave successfully spread across the continent. However, because the evidence is only a piece of the back of the skull, some researchers are skeptical that the fossil can be definitively identified as Homo sapiens, and others call the date into question. Some paleoanthropologists have long suspected that Southeast Europe was a hot spot for ancient humans. Not only is the region at the crossroads of three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe, but it enjoyed a relatively mild climate when other parts of Europe were covered by glacier. The first fossil, Apidima 1, is represented by a skull piece. The second, Apidima 2, is more complete and includes the face. The Apidima 1 skull fragment was more complete on one side than the other, and Apidima 2 skull and face were distorted. So researchers began by figuring out what they originally looked like, and scanned both fossils with x-rays and created 3D reconstructions. They digitally broke Apidima 2 into 66 bone fragments, and painstakingly reassembled them into what was probably their original shape. The result showed the face of a typical Neanderthal jutting from the skull, and complete with protruding brow ridges. The ratio of uranium to its decay products in the bones revealed an age of about 170,000 years old. For Apidima 1, scientists created a mirror image of the fossil, and stitched the two together images to see the full shape of the back of the skull. It was short and round, like the skulls of Homo sapiens, and lacked a ridge and furrow that Neanderthal skulls typically have at the back of the skull. On this evidence, scientists concluded that the skull most likely belonged to Homo sapiens. Uranium dating of Apidima 1 puts its age at 210,000 years old. That makes it at least 15,000 years older than the next oldest fossil of our species, found outside of Africa, in Mislia Cave. Apidima is also about 100,000 years younger than the oldest known Homo sapiens fossils in the world, from Jebel Erhoud in Morocco. However, researchers are also divided on whether Apidima 1 convincingly represents a member of our species. According to the study Apidima 1 clearly preserves enough of the cranium to demonstrate that it is definitively Homo sapiens, but not everyone agrees. In ancient humans, the shape of the back of the skull doesn't always predict the shape of the face. The Jebel Erhoud skull, for example, has an archaic, elongated back but a distinctly modern face. The Neanderthal lineage may encompass more anatomical variations than researchers yet realize, perhaps including a short, round skull. This also highlights the scarcity of our knowledge of archaic Homo sapiens. For example, the Iwo Eluru fossil of Africa has been suggested to be an archaic hybrid or a relict archaic human population. According to one study, the late Pleistocene dating of the Iwo Eluru fossil implies that the transition to anatomical modernity in Africa was more complicated than previously thought, with late survival of archaic features and possibly deep population substructure in Africa during this time. There are three dominant explanations for the Iwo Eluru fossil's atypical cranial shape, the first, that Iwo Eluru was a hybrid with archaic African populations, the second, that Iwo Eluru fossil was a member of a relict archaic population that was replaced by modern Homo sapiens at the start of the Holocene era and the third, that Iwo Eluru may have descended from a lineage that existed 200,000 to 400,000 years ago, and was wiped out by modern humans. Recent research revealed that Iwo Eluru possesses neurocranial morphology intermediate in shape between archaic hominins, and Homo sapiens. Such an apparently long distinct lineage that terminated in West Africa perhaps 12,000 years ago, with no obvious sign of living descendants, suggests that the Iwo Eluru lineage quite likely represents a distinct species of archaic Homo sapiens. But what does all this mean? As we have discussed in recent years, the evolution of our species in Africa is far more complex than a linear process, in which some populations gradually evolve into others. Some archaic groups evolved into modern lineages, but their history did not end there. Several of these populations continued to breed with modern descendants until relatively recently. Evidence for ghost population contributions to West African and Central African hunter-gatherers has been discovered. All of this evidence comes from statistical analyses of living people's genomes, and different research groups have reached different conclusions. Some researchers point to multiple admixtures, from very ancient, diverged groups as different as today's people from Neanderthals, but all within Africa. Others point to a possible, pre-modern, population an outgroup to all modern people that diverged only 400,000 or 500,000 years ago, 
and contributed a much larger fraction of West African genetic ancestry. Some researchers believe the Jebel Erhoud hominins were members of such a pre-modern ghost population. Indeed, genetics supports these findings, as evidenced by the following examples of recent studies. For example, a genomic study of 21 individuals from 15 populations discovered not only recent breeding events between different African groups, but also hybridization with a ghost population of archaic humans that diverged from the Homo sapiens lineage near the split between Neanderthals and Denisovans. Another recent study of 405 sub-Saharan genomes documented the introgression of archaic hominins into the modern Homo sapiens genome. Remarkably, the study found that between 2% and 19% of their genome comes from an archaic hominin, that diverged before the split of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens lineages. Just as Neanderthals interbred with Homo sapiens in Eurasia, and with Denisovans in Asia, there was also breeding within our species between archaic and modern African groups that had taken different evolutionary paths, as evidenced by the features of certain fossils, including Iwo Eleru. However, the anatomy of these crania archaic does not match what the common ancestor of all African populations looked like. Nevertheless, soon after our evolution, Homo sapiens began to spread steadily across Africa. These ancient humans were driven out and replaced by modern Homo sapiens wherever we went. As evidenced by the Iwu Eleru skull, some archaic human species were able to halt our expansion for a longer period of time than the Neanderthals, until around 13,000 years ago.